I want to be clear in how I characterize this. This is a, mostly a protest. Uh, it is not. Uh, it is not generally speaking unruly. But fires have been started. <laughs> The third precinct Minneapolis police station is now on fire, Brian. Yeah, I see that. To our viewers, it uh, window frames that have been knocked out in the past 24 hours. There's a stanchion that comes out at the entrance, and what appears to have been a fire set at the exterior. Uh, to Ali's reporting, may have spread to the interior now. And Ali, that's going to get dicey. And as you keep pointing out, symbolically, it's their stand. It's their neighborhood precinct. When the barriers were breached, they then had the ability to light the bear burning over here. So now you have a liquor store over there fully engulfed, uh, and you have the police station here fully engulfed. The building right behind it, which you can't see, is the fire station, uh, which will obviously be in danger if the police station goes up. And again, to your very important point, Brian, there is no ability to bring in, I'm going to take off the mask, there's no ability to bring in the fire uh, brigade. Uh, and then you can see the processors are completely lined up in front of it. I think you can probably see that image. Uh, they are there celebrating symbolically that they have taken control of the police station. Now, here's the proof as we're in the back. Uh, we don't know where those police officers are, but the front entrance, the main entrance to the police station is now uh, in flames. There's no sign of police and there's more debris going on. There's firecrackers being put off by the protesters in all directions. We're seeing smoke. Don't know if it's tear gas. And those are fire crackers that you're seeing being blown off by the uh, protesters, Brian, out of very heavy intervention by the authorities or by the National Guard. And I have to tell you, I just keep on emphasizing that they're not here. We're not seeing that presence. We know the National Guard's in town. I saw heavily armed vehicles on my way here earlier, but there are no police vehicles. There are no armored carriers. Uh, there's no National Guard in the vicinity, but there are a lot of firecrackers. Yeah, they would need a hell of an escort to get through that crowd, as you appropriately point out. Crackers being set off in the uh, parking lot across the road. Uh, there is a sense of jubilation amongst the crowd that this this symbolic place has been taken. Uh, it, it, it's actually... These are not flashbangs. These are actually firecrackers being put on by the protesters. Um, th th this, is, th this will soon become a dangerous situation because that building is actually about to become engulfed in flames. And the protesters, uh, think of the image. Look at the image. You're watching this live on TV. This will be an image that we are going to be looking at for years to come. These are protesters with their hands up outside of a burning police station, which was home to four police officers who were involved in the death of George Floyd. This is the... the the, the symbol, their silhouettes with the with the fire behind them. But there's a public, public safety issue here, too. There are lots and lots of people here. There is no way of getting a fire department in here. And this is an area where buildings are, are closely spaced next to each other. So for the police station, there are fires burning in different directions around me. There's another fire over there. You can see from the aerial shots. And to your point a moment ago, I have seen lasers in the last few minutes. Uh, I don't know what they're doing. Now, just to, you're, you're, you were talking about traffic around here. This street right here is open. Open. There's no police presence, as Morgan said. There's no one stopping anybody. Barricades were put up on certain streets around the area, but it doesn't matter because people just move the barricades. There's no police. They're continuing on, and this is what's left. So this fire, as you predicted, has gone through the roof. It's now gone through the rafters. It's, it's, it's connected to the buildings next to it. So this block is now essentially on fire, and there's nothing to be done about it. There are no uh, fire department. They had to wait till the crowd left before they could do anything, and that building had burned out by that time. So at that point, this is now what's happening. So, uh, in, in South Minneapolis, there's an entire block basically on fire, and a, a half of the block next to it. That's after three blocks last night, uh, right next to it, have burned. And there is no police presence, there's no National Guard presence, and there are no fire engines here, Brian. And, Ali, a reminder, when the uh, National Guard arrives, think of how they present to the crowd. They traditionally arrive... Uh, on Humvees. Uh, they arrive when they're dismounted wearing camo. Uh, that can be a very aggressive look. We think uh, order is supposed to be like, but there's no order right now in the streets. There's something, there's a lot of movement coming our way. A lot of movement coming our way. I, I, I want to be clear in how I characterize this. This is a 
mostly a protest. Uh, it is not. Uh, it is not generally speaking unruly. But fires have been started. I, I, I want to be clear in how I characterize this. This is a, mostly a protest. Uh, it is not. Uh, it is not generally speaking unruly. But fires have been started. This is a, mostly a protest. Uh, it is not. Uh, it is not generally speaking unruly.